how much is too much in, in regard to training for a fight like this? Like maybe training for a three round fight is the way to go when you have to fight a five round fight. So you're not so fucking beat up by the time you get to the fight. If you already know how to fight five rounds, you've already done it. And if you're a guy like Connor who's just got so much experience in the game, it might be that it's like there's a point of diminishing returns in terms of your strength and conditioning and that guys just go too far push too hard and just don't have it yeah. when it comes to i mean how many times have you seen a fighter be overtrained when they fight very often definitely you know they've, they've given their best rounds in the gym and it's very difficult as well in those last two weeks because anxiety is starting to grow so you want to train harder right and you, you want to get one more spar in and you want to yeah you know because the fight's coming it's, it's almost like when you're back in school and you're cramming for an exam mm -hmm. well if the exam's tomorrow i'm going to stay up all night studying right you know and right. I, it actually got me through college so <laughs> it works somewhat but but in fighting we got to do we got to do the opposite we yeah. got to have it we got to have a solid taper off period and that is hard when you're dealing with a 20 something year old man and he, he's, yeah. he's he's dealing with what's what's coming around the corner so but you know that's uh, that's the trainer's job. You know. How much did he taper off for this fight? Uh, same as usual. We have about a two week uh, taper off period where we start bringing it down. Um, he did. He did actually spar even after that. Um, you know, we're, we were working very hard for this fight in a limit. You know, somewhat limited period of time. Um, so we did didn't taper off quite the way we would normally do, but roughly two weeks. If you wanted to do a rematch, and if the UFC did grant a rematch, then this is obviously dependent upon how the Nevada State Athletic Commission handles the legal ramifications of him jumping out of the cage, attacking Dylan Dennis, the subsequent brawl, the chaos that ensued, visas. I mean, you're, you're dealing with a lot of legal shit yeah, in this fight yeah. that, that could hold things up. I mean, they held both guys' purses, correct? Uh, well, they held uh, Habib's. Connor got his. Yeah, okay. Connor got his purse paid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he gets his purse. And Khabib, I mean, who the fuck knows what's going to happen with him? You know, and. Uh, yeah, I, I hope they're, they're lenient on him. And not just so we can get a rematch. I mean, I love watching him fight first. Yeah. Um, and I can. I can stretch myself to understand his reaction. Yeah. I can stretch myself to understand. I can't stretch myself to understand the other guys' reactions. I agree. And what, and what they did. Yes. For Habib, he jumped over the cage and he jumps. On. It's, it's not the end of the who world. Who was the guy that jumped in that was wearing red who, who punched Connor? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that's his boxing coach, but I'm, I'm guessing He's here. a fighter. He fights for the UFC. Uh, in the red? Was yeah. that not an old? He wasn't yeah. older. No. He actually worked with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> you work with there him? There you go. Yeah. Who is he? I don't, I don't know his name. You know, I think, I think, it's either Islam or Rustan. Yeah. yeah, it was either Islam or Rustam. Yeah, I, I, think, I don't think I it was either one no, of those guys. Like, like I know Islam, it's a different guy. He was, you know, he hit Dylan. Yeah, yeah. And, and a guy in a suit that I heard is his Russian manager. He uh, hit Dylan. Either way, um, um, there's but, but actually in the cage when when your man yeah. went in and, and and hit him from behind. Uh, yeah, you know, I can't I can't understand that. Like I said, for 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 Habib, I didn't think it was, you know, it was. It's just it's almost it's, just, it's a, uh, such a foolish thing to do because foolish he, thing to do he'd already won. Yeah, I know that Dylan was talking shit and he was angry, but well, he actually didn't say anything because I I heard a few people saying that. Now I was standing beside Dylan, I didn't see what he did, but I could hear. So he didn't say anything. Now when I watched back, I seen he kind of beckoned him on. Yeah, you know, just stupid end of fight stuff. But it I didn't think it justified that level of response. Now maybe there was something else in the lead up. You know. Probably. Dylan is a bit of a troll online, yeah. so uh, there's probably a bit of a build-up of other stuff, but um, yeah, like I said, it, it wasn't that big a deal to me what Habib did. Yeah. It just really wasn't. Well, there's two ways of looking at it in, in terms of like the trash talking, and w one way is that, man, does that sell a fight? I mean, it sells a fight. I mean, Connor's one of the best ever at it, if not the best ever at it, talking shit to opponents, getting them riled up. I mean, it is the reason why Jose Aldo lost his composure and came charging face first at Connor. I mean, you've you got to think emotions played a big part of that. It, it ramps up your stress. It ramps up the fighter's uh, anxiety, anticipation, and it ramps up the pressure on them to win. And, to, and this emotion that they're fighting with fucks up their judgment. It just does. And it's a major tool that, Tonner, that Connor uses. And, but on the other hand, people say, well, I like it when fighters are respectful. And this is one of the things that Khabib's saying. This, this, this sport should be about respect. You shouldn't be talking about someone's family. shouldn't be talking about someone's religion. You shouldn't be talking about someone's country. But 
you know, on the other hand, that's one of the reasons why Connor's so fucking huge. It's not just his results. It's all the other things that come along with it. It's the excitement that he generates, the shit talking, the who the fuck is that guy? Like that kind of <laughs> shit. That's a big part of who he is. Mm. It's a part of who he is as this cultural icon. I mean, it's one of the reasons why people love him. I mean, they, they, they don't just love his ability inside the octagon, which is quite substantial. They, they love the swagger. They love when he comes in with rubber arms and, and struts <laughs> around the cage. They love work. all that shit. They love all that shit, but it's like, when is too far? And that is the question. When is too far?